Hello everybody and welcome back to, or not welcome back, but welcome to uh, our second Let's Play series of 80 Days. So if you watched my first attempt at going around the world in 80 days, you know that it ended in failure. Uh, we made it back to London in 101 days, uh, owing largely to, number one, um, not knowing enough about the game first and foremost, I think, but number two, uh, we did have some unfortunate random events occur to us, like we were detained for like four days in Vladivostok, we got captured by Cali cultists, and um, what was the other one? Oh, uh, Chittagong, we, I think we, uh, yeah, the railway got blown up by uh, separatists, so we did have some, some things that happened that made it a little bit difficult on us, but overall it was a pretty good experience, and you know, the fact that the game lets you continue playing even if you fail to make it 80 days and you know it still kind of rewards you for getting around i think really adds to the charm of this game this game isn't about like failure this game is about exploration and you know seeing new things and having fun so uh well done game this is this is uh, an excellent game i'm more than happy to do another uh, playthrough hopefully this one will go a little bit better i think my plan is to uh, go to the south and uh, probably try to travel as light as possible. All right, let's begin. Let us begin. Day one, my master returned home from the reform club with a strange gleam in his eye. Passporto said he, we are going around the world. Pack my hunting rifle and my evening jacket. There's not a moment to waste. So he wants his hunting rifle and his evening jacket. The European train timetable would be very, uh, very good as well. Can't take it. Um, you know, let's throw the trousers back in there. Oh, we have to throw both those back in there. Yeah, that's fine. Timetables are of great assistance. Just remember to sell them when they're not useful anymore. And if you sell them before they stop being useful, then you lose those routes, I'm pretty sure. All right, we're packed up. Let's depart. So, uh, I guess our first stop is going to be. Uh, so these are routes that we have not, uh, that I personally have discovered, but uh, we have not discovered in the game. All right, well here we go. Here we go. We're on the Amph Amphitrite Express, which we took uh, took in our first game as well. Lipped aboard the 825 from Charing Cross as the final whistle shrieked its warning. Our journey had begun. Greetings, Monsieur Verne. Passporto, did you say your name was? What a curious appellation. Uh, what can you tell me about Paris? Your city is still recovering from the siege, I think. Yeah, you're right. Let's change the topic to Nice. You mentioned trains. I've been told one can travel aboard the Trans-Siberian Express from Moscow to Kurimskaya, but the fare is nearly 2,000 pounds. Well, what can you tell me about Kurimskaya? I find your accent confusing, but tell me, uh, tell me, what is this journey of yours? Wager. Wager? What a marvelously simple way to motivate an adventure. Tell me more about Paris. I love the smell of Sienne in the morning. Uh, what's Meteora Valley? Here's something I do know. Meteora Valley is beautiful, certainly, but somewhat overrated. Bloemfontein? I don't know, but listen, I heard they discovered diamonds near Bloemfontein. Okay, so we found the uh, Trans-Siberian Railroad, which costs a lot of money and probably takes a really long time, but it, it will get you to the coast, to Vladivostok. So we could try to get to Moscow, but we don't have any routes open there. Hmm. The Amphitrite Express rattled along narrow gauge rails to Dover, where its fins extended and it plunged directly into the channel. Monsieur Fogg made no remark as the dark water pressed against our windows. I thought it so marvelous at the time, but how many marvels were still to come? So I think part of the fun of this is deciding how you want to role play your valet too, you know, because the a lot of the different things that you choose to do have, you know, can affect, can affect, well, you know, what happens. 
We splashed up onto the rails of, at uh, Calais and closed the remaining miles at Paris Gare du Nord. Quickly, ex according to today's paper, Monsieur Fogg remarked, the Orient Express now runs as far as Bucharest. Interesting. Where's Bucharest? Orient Express, huh? Hmm. Alright, well, let's sell the rifle then. What do we got? Cracker biscuits, driving cap, Chateau, Equin, wine, Copenhagen. Are we going to be going to Copenhagen? I just, I don't know if we're going to be going to Copenhagen. Alright, um, we're at 1 p.m. Copenhagen's all the way up here. You know, we were going to go to the south. But I, I kind of want to go over here and take the Trans-Siberian Railroad. I don't know. This arrives Friday. Departs in two days. Two days? Are you kidding me? The evening jacket would change their mind. Yeah, let's do it. Departs tomorrow at 9 a.m. All right, good. Um, is there anything we need to buy in Nice? No, and we're definitely not going to Copenhagen. Uh, the bank would not work. We, could, we would have to pick up our money after, uh, basically after our transportation departs. The exposition uh, universelle sprawled over the grounds of the purpose-built Palais du Champ de Mars. Hot air balloons sailed gently across the sky, and the powdery light of the uh, Blotchkov candles gleamed invitingly. Um, I was flooded with memories of the siege of Paris and my own small part in it. It's hard to believe that only a year ago I had been a blockade runner on the balloon post, which smuggled letters and communications over the Prussian forces by hot air balloon. Before my first run, an elderly artificer with a copper lily pin gleaming upon her collar had explained how to operate the burner valves and vents, and how to read the wind currents by spitting into the air. Um, I had masked my terror with arrogance, and given her a cocky grin which roused only a pained sigh in response. Alas, as an artificer I cannot involve myself in matters of war, she said flatly, adjusting the lie of her copper lily pin, but you poor boy. Only wish to take this package of love letters to your sweetheart at Poitier. Poitier? Hmm. I understand you, Madam Artificer. Remarked slyly. I continued grimly, helping to load another parcel of photographically reduced military documents and strategic communi communiques into the balloon's gondola, taking pity on a poor love-struck boy caught in the midst of war. Uh, back then, I thought we would prevail. We would have to. That the other nations of the world would send aid. That our battalions in Loire would triumph and march to the city. I had thought our courage could stave off thirst and hunger and cholera as well as Prussian guns. But Paris had surrendered. And the next month, the Prussians rode their horses through the city in victory while we ate Bismarck's grain and meat, as promised in the armistice. I looked at the gleaming peaceful streets of Paris now and saw only war and siege. I snatched the Prussian airships from the air and muted the sounds of artillery. I scrubbed the smoke from the sky and left only the pink tinged ochre of the sun setting. I doused the fires raging around the city and resurrected the horses, rats, and cats from their slaughter. I resurrected the Paris of my childhood, its gaily lit cafes and dark catacombs, its boulevards and gutters, its poets and radicals, its dark-eyed youths with whom I had danced and kissed on the banks of the Seine. I promised myself then that this is how I would remember Paris. It is how I remember my city even now. Uh, cat, we already know what we're going to do, brother. I believe. Yeah, we already know what we're going to do. We're departing for Nice tomorrow. We took a hotel for the night. We will be comfortable here, Monsieur Fogg remarked, but traveling overnight will often be more efficient. Where possible. We cannot travel where it is not possible, certainly, he replied. Still, the surrounds of the Hotel Ritz were most enjoyable. Here we go. The Pyrenees Express. 
I do think something I'm going to try to do on this Let's Play is I'm going to try harder to make extra money at hotels. We boarded our train at Gare de Lyon. Lyon? 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 Uh, which had opened only the previous week. Um, the ticket booths were all staffed by Automata and cylinder phonographs installed throughout the station played La Mas Marseillaise in Triumph. We found a comp compartment and settled in the plush seats with a complimentary glass of Provencal Ros to grace the trip. Uh, I raised my glass to Monsieur Fogg. He tipped his own glass towards me courteously, but left the wine within untasted until dinner was served. Greetings, Monsieur. Good afternoon. My name is Alfred Dumont. I'm very interested in Nice. Nice used to be quite run down, you know. Uh, what can you tell me about Nice to Tunis? I think you're out of luck there. Now, anyway, I've worked this line since it opened. We're seeing more famous people these days. Indeed. Indeed, you and Monsieur Fogg are the most famous, of course. The Riviera is only just becoming fashionable because of the train. What about Nice to Venice? Yes, one can travel in a private car from Nice to Venice, but the journey is a tiring one. Um, hmm. Can you tell me about Venice? I must go, it is late. Okay, so we did find a new route to Venice. I was hoping maybe to find something down towards the African coast, like Tunis. We could hop across the Mediterranean. The hours flew by and I spent them watching the scenery go by and relaxing. Even a valet must take time off. The train rattled on, arriving to Nice later in the evening. We stepped out to balmy autumn weather and a gentle murmur in the air. Ah, my friends, the sea. I would love, I've never been to Europe and I would love to go to Europe someday and like see the Mediterranean Sea and visit Paris and all this stuff. It all takes money. Okay, so uh, tentatively, I guess we're we're making our way to Venice. Leaves at 5 p.m. So we do have time probably uh, to explore tomorrow and maybe find a little bit better route. We can also hit the market at 7. If we find a better route that we like more, we could also maybe hit the bank. The long pebbled beaches of Nice were filled with Italians of one sort or another. Uh, a few uh, selling sweet pastries, which tasted of almond and butter. I munched contentedly um, while I strolled along the promenade, watching the ships come and go from the harbor. Since being seated back to the Bosom Francais, Nice had become a, hu a bustling hub of activity. Boats plied the waters daily, and there was talk of building a tram to link the hotels to the beaches and the casinos. Uh... We found a sailor to talk to and asked for advice about how we should proceed. He shrugged. There's cars to Venice and the boat to Rome. Good. Depends where you want to go, of course. I think Rome is better than Venice at this point. Um, which would you recommend? He frowned. Well, I wouldn't go to Rome if I were you. People there aren't quite right, if you know what I mean. Uh, what's wrong with him? He mimed a chopping motion I did not understand, but refused to say more. Um... I thanked him and moved along. My feet were tired. I murmured my goodbyes to the sea, and I knew to France uh, and returned to my master. Your funds have gone out in just a touch. So we did find a route to Rome. Okay, so it's the next day. Let's look at our options here. So that leaves at 5. This leaves tomorrow at 4. Uh, we could negotiate probably to get to get out today. Takes three suitcases, costs 11 health. Let's go to the market. What do they got? Elastic wallet, Yushanka fur coat. Mm. This would keep us from getting pickpocketed. Would have been really good in my last playthrough. Bank opens at 9, huh? Let's explore. Let's explore and see if we can find another route. I took a few hours to explore investigating the various options for how we might continue our journey. He didn't find anything? He didn't find anything. Do we still have the option of negotiating? Yes, we do. At 
4 p.m. So we could leave today. Yeah, let's do it. I don't really think we need to visit the bank just yet. I think there will be other opportunities to visit banks. We boarded the Blue Line Ferry named after the successful train line through France and found a place on its crowded stern to wave at the port as we departed. Um, when I say we... When I say we, I do not mean myself and Monsieur Fogg, of course. He had no interest in seeing our departure, nor in standing at the front of the boat and watching our progress. Um, I was joined at the prow by rather more enjoyable company, a young woman named Estelle, whom I had bumped into while hauling our case up the ramp. You are an explorer, she asked? <laughs> I try not to be. She nodded, but seemed disappointed by my answer. I want to be an explorer, she said. Imagine the whole world stretching out beneath your feet. Who knows what secrets it holds. Uh, give me good food and a cognac and I am happy. But who knows what good food even is, she replied, until you have tried it all. I found such enthusiasm rather, rather giddying. That, or the roll of the sea, made me stumble. We would be aboard for just one night. It was important to be comfortable. And we are now steadfast. Is this Estelle? Yes, it is. Well, hello again, monsieur. Tell me about Rome. They say the Venetian artificers control all of Italy behind the scenes. What about Alexandria? All I know is this, Alexandria is being rebuilt stone by stone, it seems. But answer me this, perhaps to turn around the deck? Certainly. Ah, the warm wind is so wonderful. Uh, can you tell me anything else about Rome? The new unified king of Italy is very powerful. What about Rome to Khartoum? Well, sure, really. But you can buy perfectly ground glass in Khartoum that will sell for a fortune in eight Tunis. Please, monsieur, I must go, but I hope we will talk again. The game's killing me with lack of routes at this point. Mademoiselle Estelle met me in the restaurant, taking the seat opposite. I've worked it out, she announced cheerfully. Uh, what have you worked out, I asked. Who you are? I know your secret. I was taken aback. Perhaps she had seen me during the day. I cannot fathom what you mean, I replied. She pulled out a copy of the Times. Here, she cried, folding it and lifting to my attention. To my astonishment, it was a headline about her journey. Phileas Fogg attempts round-the-world adventure. I must have colored as she pointed a finger. I knew it was you. Giddy with her discovery, she punched me on the arm. What an exciting adventure. I shrugged. It has been quite simple so far. I'm glad to hear it. You have a long way still to go, she replied. Fancy my meeting Phileas Fogg himself. So she thinks that we're Fogg. <laughs> uh, I opened my mouth to dissuade her, but she interrupted. You're more dashing than the story made out, she continued excitedly. Wait until I tell my mother. Mademoiselle, I am not Phileas Fogg. Of course, I understand. She tapped the side of her nose and then triumphant made to get up. I'm sure you're in a hurry, so I won't keep you. Uh, thank you, mademoiselle. I replied ungratefully, and as foggishly as I could muster, I returned to my lunch. Your character is now shabby. Ah, we're shabby. We don't want to be shabby, right? I don't want to be shabby. It sounds disgusting. I'm shabby enough in real life as it is. I don't play games to be myself. I want to play games to be other people. <laughs> we arrived into Rome the next day, and I began to unload our case. Where the, when the captain stopped me, new regulations, he insisted, ordered by the new Italian regime. Uh, yeah, sure. I waved a hand for him to continue. You're traveling from England? Uh, indeed so. The captain nodded, then you were required to sign this disclosure of artificer's materials. He produced a long roll of paper, which I began to look over when young Mademoiselle Estelle appeared. Monsieur Fogg! She cried. Uh, I quickly introduced my master to her. What else could I do? Mademoiselle Estelle took an uncertain step back, glancing between us. My master's sharp, aquiline profile, my own rounded, gallic features. Mademoiselle, you miss you wish to meet Monsieur Fogg, I said sympathetically. Here he is. She thought for a moment more, then grinned. Oh, I understand, she said. Very good. She's she's <laughs> she thinks it's part of the plan, okay. I gave up. There was clearly no use in explaining either to her nor to my master, who was somewhat perplexed. Passeporto? he asked, as Estelle hurried away in some confusion. Youth, Monsieur, I replied feebly. 
<laughs> awesome. Rome, Rome, Rome. So we're going to have to explore. Let's hit the market first. So Marble Bust. No, we're definitely not going to Helsinki and Zotrope. We might be going this direction, though. And it is pretty cheap. Let's pick it up. All right. Explore. What do we find? New routes. Okay, so there is a route to Venice, route to Dubrovnik, and I didn't see the other one. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put a cut in there on the video. Uh, it's went, uh, you know, about my about about to my time limit. Uh, I'm excited. I think we're making pretty good time so far. Hopefully, that will continue, and we're getting to experience a little bit more of the world, a little bit more of the story. So, I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. So. Thank you guys for joining me in this new Let's Play. Since it is a new series, it is super, super, I cannot stress to you how much helpful it is uh, to get likes and comments and shares at the start so that, you know, in all honesty, just so more people see it. So, if you can do that, you'd be an all-star. I mean, you're already an all-star because you're watching the video. You'd be an extra all-star. I don't know. Talking out my ass. See you guys later. Game on.